Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about drying 3D printer filament. Many types of 3D printer filament, PLA and nylon based filaments, will want to absorb moisture into them which can negatively impact their performance when printing. So you can use a relatively inexpensive $30-ish food dehydrator to dehydrate, get that water out, and make the filament print the way it's supposed to. I realize that drying your filament is not a new concept. It's been around for quite some time, and if you've ever bought filament, you've probably seen the little desiccant packs that sit inside, you know, the whole silicon do not eat kind of thing. So this really isn't a new concept by any stretch of the imagination. One of the reasons why I'm doing this video, though, is because I live in a dry climate. I live in Colorado. We have extremely low humidity, and I didn't think this was really much of a problem for me until I started printing a lot more with nylon-based filaments. Nylon-based filaments and PLA are hydro Philic, which means that they really love water. So hydrophobic is something that's afraid of water and, well, we all know what the root word philic means. It is something that loves something else. So this stuff loves water. If there's any moisture in the area, it will just absorb into the filament. Uh, nylon much more so than others. So even just having these exposed to the air, um, you know, me out here in my shop, it can absorb some of that moisture. And just because you have a roll of filament that's sealed directly from the factory, that does not guarantee that it is dry inside of there. Sure, it has a little desiccant pack inside of there, but I have definitely opened up brand new rolls of filament, put them on the printer, and I hear that crackling and popping, which means the um, water is expanding inside the filament. So just because you have a new roll doesn't mean it's dry. So this really begs the question, how do you know if your filament has excessive moisture or really any moisture? Any moisture is going to be detrimental to printing. Well, this is a really difficult question to answer because it can manifest in a lot of different ways. You could get a poor first layer, you could get poor surface adhesion or layer adhesion between the layers, or just an overall really bad surface finish. I know when I was printing with some Nylon X, I was getting really bad issues with the layers actually staying together. They were kind of separating, which is really rare for a Nylon X filament. And also that first layer just looked really stringy and really nasty, and it turned out it was just moisture. A really good telltale sign that you have moisture in your filament is you hear that popping or crackling when it's running through the extruder. And that just means that there's water in there and it's basically rapidly evaporating as it's hitting that heated extruder. So that's definitely something to look out for. Okay, so we've established that any amount of moisture in your filament is bad. Dehydrating, good. So let's look at a dehydrator. Now you can get a specific dehydrator for drying out your filament. You can also toss this in a toaster oven or your own oven. Uh, the main difference to using a large oven like that is you have to really dry this stuff out for like you know 12 or 24 hours. So you might not want to tie up your oven for that long. Also, this is plastic. Plastic likes to outgas some really nasty chemicals you'd probably not want to do that where you're going to be eating your food from. So it is definitely recommended you have your own little vessel for doing the dehydrating. I picked up this dehydrator from Amazon for about 30 bucks and it has served me quite well. Uh, I do have a link below down in the description for that if you want to grab one of these. The thing I like about this is it's a very easily modifiable. You can fit two filament spools in here at the same time and it has a nice little adjustable temperature on the front. Think about it this way. You're printing filament at different temperatures. You're going to dry them at different temperatures as well. So a nylon-based filament, which prints at a higher temperature, is going to be dried at a higher temperature as well. If you try and dry a PLA, which prints at a lower temperature, at the same temperature with your nylon, you'll get some warpage and you're not going to have a good time. So it is best to dry those filaments separately at different temperatures. Check down below in the description, I have a little um, you know, table that shows what different filaments should be dried at. So let's take a closer look at the actual dehydrator. Uh, this is a Westinghouse brand. As I said, I've got the link down below for Amazon. It was about 30 bucks, and I added this little temperature sensor on the outside. It's just a little indoor-outdoor thermometer that I've had forever from Radio Shack, and I just dropped the probe down inside the thing. 
The reason I did this is because the dial on the front, you know, this isn't a super high quality product. So I just wanted to make sure that the temperature inside was what I expected it to be. One of the reasons why I got this one is the form factor and the size is really good for this application. Most all dehydrators have these like stacking rings to where you can, you know, stack different layers of food. Some of them are square, most of them are round. This one fits filament spools really nicely. You can see fits in there, nice and good. The other thing that I liked about this one is it was pretty easy to modify. You have these little rings and they come like this. And all you simply do is just go around the outside, clip this inside away, and now you have little spacer rings. So I've got one there, one there, and then down here in the bottom, I've got all my desiccant packs. So it's nice to kind of load these up, and this is how you can dry out your desiccant packs. And I just kind of leave these inside of here. And then you have, you know, just more spacer rings, and it comes with all of these pieces. The other interesting thing about this is it looks like it's an exact copy of the print dry filament system, which is a commercial print drying system. If you don't want to mess with any of this, you can definitely look at that. I've got the link to that down below just in case you're interested. It's quite a bit more expensive, but it does have like a little lazy Susan and some filament holes coming out the side. It's just a lot more um, polished and clean. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. You can just take your spools of filament, put them in like that. Um, let's see, add in that, add a spacer, put that in, turn it on and you're good to go. Now, generally speaking, you're going to want to dehydrate this for somewhere around 12 to 24 hours. So it's going to take some time, but thankfully it is relatively quiet. So you can just kind of set this in the corner of your workshop and go from there. And if you're doing really long prints, it is a good idea to maybe just drill a hole in the side, something like that, and actually feed directly out of the dehydrator because on those really long prints, your spool is actually going to absorb moisture into it if it's sitting on the top of the printer. So it might be a good idea to print directly from the dehydrator. When I first started looking into dehydrating my filament, I found that a lot of people were using ovens and things like that, and I really didn't want to mess with that because if you get the temperature wrong, you can kind of melt the spools. So then I started looking at Amazon, looking at actual food dehydrators, but they come in all different sizes, and I wasn't sure you know, what would fit with the filament. So hopefully this gives you a little bit better idea of something that worked for me. A little side note, the link for this dehydrator down below is an Amazon affiliate link, so it will give me a kickback for this channel. If you don't want that to happen, just you know, go into Amazon and type out the link yourself. You don't have to use the link if you do not want to. One last final note about the trays inside of here. If you're using a taller than normal spool, you might want to cut out the inner ring as well. Earlier I showed cutting out the outer to make something like that, but you might want to cut out the inner ring as well. That'll give you a little bit more clearance for those taller spools. Now, if you're doing really tall spools, you can simply just take out one of these trays and then just use the rings and you can get quite a bit. I mean, you can get, I don't know, like six, eight inches, something like that in there, but you can fit some really big spools if you just use the rings, but you will just be able to put one spool in there instead of the two spools. So just something to keep in mind. So hopefully that gives you a better idea about what is involved in dehydrating your filament. I highly recommend doing it. I've been dehydrating all my filament and it definitely has improved pretty much all of my prints. So it's well worth doing. It's really cheap. It's really simple. Uh, before I go to do a print, I just stick it in the dehydrator overnight and then print with it. And that has been a good little process for me. So as always, thanks for watching and see you again next time.